I'm going to be going into the industrial space after Tuck. Um, and so I wanted to know, well, you know, what does this mean as far as bringing new technology into an, an older company that doesn't move as quickly? Um, you know, what is realistic to expect? So I took a look at the industrial internet of things um, and some of the adoption challenges that companies will see, um, as well as some of the solutions that companies are coming up with. Um, and just very briefly, you know, what is IoT? IoT is, um, you know, devices connected basically by the internet, um, which, you know, allows them to, to share data, um, to, you know, look at trends in data, um, and to, you know, look at maybe trends, efficiency, you know, ways that they can improve their products. Um, when you bring it to the industrial space, it basically means taking this technology and putting it into big manufacturing machines that will improve maybe the efficiency of a manufacturing process. It also means looking at taking this technology and putting it into the end product. So, um, you know, an example would be a jet engine. Um, you know, data that you generate from a jet engine is going to give you a lot of insight in how to correctly uh, operate your jet. Um, and so the, the value proposition, there's a lot of numbers out there. Uh, the one that I, I guess maybe looks a little more reasonable that I've seen is um, this last one here, a $14.4 trillion market opportunity over the next 10 years. That was, that was from Cisco. Um, and to, to get an idea of where this technology sits, um, this is the Gartner hype, hype cycle. And um, we are, with IoT, not just industrial, but IoT in general, we're right at the, the peak of inflated expectations. Um, <laughs> and it's, what that means is everybody's saying, wow, this is going to be a big thing. I mean, the numbers, they, they just say, you know, I've got to bring this into my company. Um, and there's going to be a prolonged period here where people are just trying to figure out how exactly to do that and what it means for their organization in particular. And that, that's really what I'm focusing on is, What's that going to be? That's the trough of disillusionment. Um, so when you look at this, you know, why will this take a long time? Um, there are challenges, really big challenges that people have to face. Um, and I, I won't go too far into data security because I think one of our um, upcoming presentations goes a little bit further into it. Um, but basically, you know, data is exposed. Um, it's out there. Anybody tip, te technically could go in and grab it. Um, and that's a big risk for companies to take, um, which then forces companies to beef up their security, which is expensive. And if you think about a big industrial company, um, they're not going to be like a Google where they can just go out there and buy something. They're going to go through a big, long procurement process with anything they bring into their company. And they're going to have a hard time justifying the risk and the cost when they go out and try to um, you know, bring in some of this new technology, at least the way things look right now. Um, Another issue is a lack of uh, universal coding language. Um, right now, companies that are starting to build out products and that are, who are in the services and infrastructure space um, are very much doing it within their own little islands. And as a result, they're not using um, the same types of protocols and languages, and their products aren't going to be able to talk to each other. And, and you know, the issue with that is you may have two products that would be very complementary to each other. And if I'm, if I'm an industrial manufacturer, I'm looking at bringing both of these in to improve my process. Um, I'm not going to be able to, or it's going to be very difficult to or very costly. Um, so that's a, that's a big issue that companies are looking at right now. Um, and another one that you can almost say this might be one of the biggest ones is that at least right now, there just isn't the talent that, you know, maybe someone would expect. Um, to, to basically implement something like this. So if, you know, if I'm GE, um, I may have some talent just because I've been working on this for a long time, but if I'm a smaller company um, like Danaher, you know, I gotta go out and bring in people who are you know, really up to speed on this technology, and the, the reality is there's nobody out there to do it right now. Um, and to, to another thing to highlight, this is probably more of a unique challenge to the industrial space versus just to IoT itself. Um, you know, when you look at like consumer technology, you know, typical, uh, you know, cell phone product cycle, I mean, in two and a half years, it basically went from the Motorola Razor to an iPhone. Um, and that's a big jump up in technology. Um, in industrial, I mean, you know, going from an older machine to a newer machine is 25 years. And so if I'm a procurement uh, department in a company and I'm looking at bringing in one of these new, like, you know, very much enabled machines, um, on the one hand, yeah, like this machine's really going to improve my processes, but on the other hand, this machine, you know, in five years might actually be obsolete. Do I want to um, really make the investment now or hold out or make the investment now and then go in 
uh, and you know, just buy a very expensive support contract um, to continually update this thing. It's a big question that people are faced with, and it's preventing them from diving right into this technology. Um, this might be the worst slide you see today, but I, I, I think it gets, it gets a point across. Um, I mean, you know, there's a number of steps with all, the, with all of these challenges. There's going to be solutions to all of these challenges that people will come up with. And, you know, the reality is that it's not going to be, well, you know, once this gets solved, we're going to go forward much further. It's going to be, you know, we're going to, we're going to, there's going to be an influx of talent, but then, um, you know, we're still going to need to solve the, the data security issue. And once that gets solved, there's going to be an issue with, you know, just coming up with the, the general protocols that are needed in the space. Um, it really is a series of steps that are going to move this technology forward pretty slowly, at least relative to what we've seen in consumer technology. Um, so, you know, with that, I think if anybody was at the, the Schneider Ele Electric talk that was uh, a couple weeks ago, um, he talked about, you know, it's just this is not going fast, and this is, this is absolutely the case. Um, but with all those challenges being said, the, the financial benefits um, are really there, which is why this technology really is going to take hold at some point. Um, and just some numbers to throw out there. From a revenue generation standpoint, $14.4 trillion market opportunity from Cisco. GE thinks it's $32 trillion. Um, Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, they put an estimate out there that basically said just the current addressable market opportunity is $50 to $160 billion um, for one, you know, just for the year. Um, that's from a revenue generation standpoint. Um, from cost savings with companies that are looking to become more uh, productive, um, you know, efficiency, look, you know, 30 to $60 billion in, in different industries. Um, one per, you know, 1% process efficiency gain um, would yield $63 billion in savings in, in the healthcare industry. Um, I mean, that's just absolutely huge. So, the, the, you know, the people are going to be going forward with this. Um, just briefly looking at what the industry sort of looks like right now, um, there are key, there are big industrial companies um, like GE, UTC, Siemens, Danaher, um, who are basically looking to build out IoT and their industrial enabled products um, in their print manufacturing processes and in uh, their end products, like we said earlier. Um, they're doing it on their own and they're not doing it that well, which is why these other companies exist. You have tech companies like IBM, um, Amazon's out there in the space, Cisco. These are the infrastructure and these, are, these guys are going to be providing the services to really push this forward. Um, software companies, these are the engines that run all the analytics. Um, they're also going to be partners in this space. And what we're starting to see, like GE is actually trying to transform themselves into a vertical player where they do all three of these um, and basically become an everything in this space. There, you know, there are other companies out there that are making this push, but GE is the one that's publicizing it and uh, the one that's committed the most funds to it. Um, and just a, a quick case example on GE. I mean, they're act they actually open up a new um, office space in San Ramon, California, in the Bay Area, um, where they're trying to pick up the people from LinkedIn and Google and Facebook, bring them into the industrial space and build out this platform that for them is going to run their own products. It's going to be uh, you know, something they can sell to other companies, um, to companies that buy their own GD GE products. Um, this is how they see themselves becoming a vertical player. And the reason they can do this over a lot of other companies is that they have the industrial domain knowledge in addition to the commitment to all the technology, um, the services and the analytics and everything that you know, runs on the back end. Um, and then just one more example, I had the opportunity to attend a, a CDS event earlier this year down in Houston. Um, and we got to basically visit this uh, decision support center that Chevron had set up. And as an example of what companies are just starting to do, they're talking about how they have a rig where, you know, a typical rig here has something like 40,000 different sensors on it. And right now they're monitoring about 4,000 of those. And what they're looking at is they're starting to perfect, you know, just their domain knowledge of what this data is and what they can do with it. And as they go forward, they'll start turning on more of these sensors and they'll start really turning it into actionable data that they can use to you know, improve the efficiency of the rigs. They can monitor, um, you know, just how effectively some of the rig teams are. They can monitor, you know, or they can see when a problem is going to come up and, you know, basically hit it before it explodes. 